Hey, what's going on guys? Kurosama here. Now today is going to be a special day because this is the first time I'm doing this beautiful backdrop in which I have like these lights going off and I think it looks cool. But if y'all think the kind of like uh, the fading away in and out of different colors is a little bit too distracting, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll go ahead and just keep it like a, a very flat color. But otherwise, I do think the, you know, kind of flashing is pretty cool. Uh, just something that's going on behind me and not just very like drag. But anyways, let's get on to the review for today. So what we have is a very special masterpiece figure, and that is none other than the beautiful Megatron. This is from the 2007 Transformers movie directed by Michael Bay. And honestly, I can say I love that movie just because of the nostalgia. Uh, I really wasn't that old when I was in 2007 i think i was 18 years old so it's not like super nostalgic for me but it is something that is like really i think everyone was anticipating it It was like oh my god the transformers coming to the big screen that's live action amazing um but i can say that this is not my favorite version of megatron however i am hoping that this figure in particular is going to change my mind so with that let's go ahead and just take a look at the box so the first thing you gotta notice is that this is a huge box honestly just completely massive uh i i think it's the biggest masterpiece movie figure we have uh or actually it might be the star scream it's it's definitely going to be a tie between one of those two for largest box because i don't think the optimus prime was even that big even close to being that big but it looks great honestly the front cover looks fine looking on the side nothing really going on there it's just the same kind of illustrations or uh, pictures that you had on the front now looking on the back you just get a couple of cool looking things obviously right here you're going to have just a little like firing mode of its cannon you have the insert all spark cube and then you got some uh, included die cast parts the alt mode you got articulated mouth hands and the weapon blaster so with the box out of the way let's take a look at what's inside so straight out of the box this is a really really hefty and large transformer i was really expecting it to be a little bit smaller for whatever reason but getting it out of the box i'm like overly impressed by the just sheer intimidation and size that it has now for price, I actually paid about 7,000 yen for it. It was like on sale in Amiami, so I just caught a really good deal. Otherwise, I really wasn't interested in getting it, but I think the price point is just really what pushed me to it. And I really wish I would have picked it up much sooner. Obviously, I would have paid probably like 5,000, yeah, about 5,000 more yen for it. But I keep looking at it. Now I'm thinking the extra 5000 I would have paid maybe a year ago would have been still nice uh, just because I would have had it in my hands earlier and I could have you know played with it, put it on the shelf. But the fact that I did save so much money, that's just a huge plus. Now for details, this is just riddled with details all over. I mean, it just has beautiful sculpting. It, the, the head sculpt by itself is just amazing. And you go down to the body, the body's looking super good, super detailed. The arms look really awesome. You see like all the, the kind of wires that make up onto the arms and just going down to the legs. It's really, really beautiful. And this thing also has a little bit of you know die cast metal. So if you go down to the feet right here in the front, it's actually gonna have a little bit of die cast. And if you go onto the back, this is gonna have a little die cast as well. Now this thing doesn't really pack any kind of like gimmicks or any kind of cool, unique features. It's really just a straightforward transformer that actually has just one main weapon and kind of like a semi-weapon alongside it. But it's really not that bad. We'll cover the weapons a little bit later though. Now in terms of articulation, it's actually not too bad. I thought it was really gonna be more brick-like. However, it doesn't really seem to be the case. This has a pretty good range of articulation. The main problem I would say when it comes to articulation is it can't really hold itself up all that well when certain poses. It's not in all poses, but very particular ones, it's gonna have a little bit of trouble standing. And that's kind of like where the die cast metal comes in. If you wanted to stand in a particular style, you really need to utilize the weight that the die cast metal provides so that way he can have that stability on the ground but if you put him on like a stand with i don't, I don't know too many stands are going to carry this because this is a pretty hefty boy so getting a stand uh you're going to have to have some kind of like really super thick stand with st uh, like some kind of stability on it however it, on the ground it's going to be fine if you just have it in a basic standing pose or even a dynamic pose uh like you pretty much going to see it, it's not going to be that bad whatsoever so you just pretty much need to mess with it now for accessories all you're getting is two things you get this whip like 
kind of accessory, and you're also going to get this blaster. The blaster is really cool. I like the way it looks. Uh, basically goes on to the one hand, uh, but if you really want to have both hands, it, you basically take the hands off, and then you have the kind of singular cannon, much like he had in the original movie. But I think in the movie, he never actually used the cannon on the one hand, but it is an option if you just want to have kind of a little hand cannon like Mega Man. And you're also gonna have this rubber-like whip. Uh, I can honestly say this is the most lackluster accessory that I'm seeing right now. It's just, it's really flimsy and kind of lewd. Now once you get it actually all plugged in, there's a little bit of articulation right here at the base of the hand, but uh, it's kind of just weird to be honest. I'm not, I'm not really digging it, I can say. The end with, you know, pretty much the little blaster is cool, but I, I think in the movie it was more of a bladed object, so I think they should have had a secondary accessory that clipped onto the end of this and not just a blaster because it kind of feels lazy to me. But if this is how it looked in the movie, cool. Otherwise, I, I think it was a pretty much lazy opportunity. Now for height comparison, here I have them next to the Studio Series Megatron. Now, I don't have the Masterpiece movie Optimus Prime. I really wish I did. Uh, I think every time I do see it, I just kind of pass on it for whatever reason. But maybe next time I'll go ahead and pick it up just because I need a companion piece with this Megatron. However, it's just really large. It's bigger than all the other Studio Series and I think it scales pretty well with um, you know, other masterpieces. I, I don't have many other, now that I think about it. Actually, I do have a, a barricade. Let me go get that. Ah, so here I have the masterpiece movie, Barricade. Another really awesome movie figure that I just really love. I think the Decepticons just have a lot of crazy looking designs. And Barricade is probably one of my favorites when it comes to Decepticons in the Babeverse line. And then just Megatron is just Man, he's just just sizing over him. He's hulking over here, and I think that's pretty much fair. I don't I don't think I remember seeing them together in the movie because Barricade came out like much earlier than when Megatron got resurrected, if I remember. Uh, but I think a good scaling would be seeing this next to the Starscream. So whenever I do pick up the Starscream figure, I think next month, then you'll go ahead and see a size comparison of those two. All right, guys, now for a transformation. So for the transformation, it's really not too complicated. There's just a couple of spots in the instructions that just really is a little bit confusing because you're trying to figure out what the image actually is. The figure itself is already super just like overly designed. So when you see in the picture, you're like, oh, like, is this the right way or is it backwards or is it upside down? So you get a little bit confused just for a quick second, but once you just like really you know, read it and you kind of go through the motions, you should be pretty much well off. Now for movie accuracy, it's actually really good. The only problem is whenever you turn it on its underside, yeah, it's basically just the robot with some parts kind of flipped around. Other than that, I mean, I really do like the design. You're mostly gonna be seeing it from the top or the sides anyway, so don't really care about the underside. Now, originally, I did actually dislike this mode as well when it came to the design of Megatron. I really just prefer a lot of the older versions, even the tank, and I'm not even the hugest fan of the tank version of Megatron, but I do think this one is not too bad now that I've got to kind of play with it and transform it, and, you know, I definitely will accept it. It's not horrible whatsoever. 
Now, if you're thinking about putting this on a stand, it's gonna be super back heavy because there's so much die cast right here in the feet, and then there's die cast right here, kind of more in the middle, but there's none of that die cast in the front. So if you put it on a stand, it's really just gonna kind of lean this way. Um, I would say maybe try and put the stand more towards the legs on this side. It, it will help it balance, but it really depends on the kind of stand that you're gonna utilize. If you're gonna utilize a Bandai stand, eh, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. It can work but you're gonna have a lot of trouble. So I don't even have any recommendations because I'm not too savvy on stands for just transformers, especially for something as hulking as this. Now what I did forget to mention is that you could actually plug in the weapon right here on the back side. It just slides right in and clips onto the top. And then the little rope, like chain like thing that just goes right here on the wing. It basically connects to the wing to the feet. Uh, really simple and I, I don't really mind it, but it's just one of those things that it's like, well, it doesn't actually detach from Megatron. He basically pulls it out of his arm. So storing option, it's cool, but realistically, you don't want to store this because he's never stored it. It's a part of his arm. So it's a little bit weird, but hey, the option's there. Now for the wings, I actually noticed that there's like this silver sheen right here in the middle. It's kind of like highlighting when it comes to painting. So they basically, what it looks like to me is that they painted it all like this really bright silver, but then they kind of went with more of like a smoky kind of gunmetal for the rest of it. And they just kind of like left the center. So much like highlighting in my opinion, uh, but it makes it look so good. Uh, unfortunately, the die cast in the middle is gonna be so like, it's gonna just stick out like incredibly much. So that's like the only thing I kind of dislike, but the wings themselves look really good when it comes to the lighting, especially if you just get it in a, a more angular kind of pose, like something like this. Man, you're gonna get some good looking shots, I, I tell you what. So for my final thoughts, Honestly, this figure is a cop -it. I didn't think that I would really like the Megatron movie figure that much. I never really wanted the previous ones. Obviously, I got the Studio Series because I think that one looks pretty good as well. But the fact that this Masterpiece one came out and I was just really reluctant on getting it and I have it in my hands and I'm just like completely in love with it. It's just like, wow, like this is fantastic i'm i'm just really blown away at, at how greatly detailed this is how hefty and just large and affordable i mean you could probably get it for less than twelve thousand. it's not really like a highly sought after masterpiece figure at least not in my opinion so the fact that i got it for about seven thousand on miami i would say go ahead and take a look at that i know people go to big bad toy store which is which is fine i, I never shopped there uh, but i would say go to Amiami, check out their prices generally you can get a pretty decent price Price here and there but for the most part this is going to be a cop it lads um but lastly hey i want to thank all my members for sponsoring this video all of you guys are amazing in every single way uh if y'all can go ahead and drop a like subscribe if you have not subscribed already and in the comment section below let me know what you would like to see reviewed next do you want to see another masterpiece figure do you want to see a studio series maybe some other type of transformer figure or do you want to see something else entirely be reviewed on this channel let me know in the comment section below and i'll definitely try to to answer you and get to those things. But other than that, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey, one last thought, guys. Don't ever be afraid to play with your toys in the comfort of your own home. In public, maybe you should be a little cautious. It's a little weird. But in the comfort of your own home, safe space, baby. Whoosh.